Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting an ANOVA step-by-step -step using Microsoft Excel. In this worksheet, I have fictitious data. And let's assume that these data come from a counseling research study. And we have three groups. We have substance use, depression, and trauma. And we have one construct we're measuring, let's say overall functioning. So the three treatments would be substance use focused treatment, depression focused treatment, and a trauma focused treatment. And then these measurements, these scores, would be from the overall functioning inventory. And we want to analyze these data with a one-way ANOVA. So we have one independent variable treatment and one dependent variable which would be functioning. Now we could of course run one-way ANOVA in software like SPSS and I will do that at the end or near the end of this video to compare the results from SPSS with the results from Excel and there's also the analysis tool pack available in Excel that can calculate the results of ANOVA. But I'm going to calculate this ANOVA step by step to show you how an ANOVA works. So you can see this worksheet is already populated with all the functions you would need to calculate an ANOVA step by step. And if I move over to this next worksheet, you can see the formatting is still the same and the data are still the same, but all the functions have been deleted. So I'm going to build them out to show you how I constructed them for the first worksheet. So let's get started first with calculating the mean for each level of the independent variable. So for substance use, depression, and trauma. So go down here to where I have this row labeled mean, and the function here is average. And then the range would be the scores under substance use first. And all we need to do here is autofill to the right. And we have the means for all three levels of the independent variable treatment, 43, 48, and 56. Next, we're going to take the sum. And the same logic will apply. We're just going to use the sum function instead of the average function. And again, autofill this. And you have the sums for substance use depression and trauma. Next we want to calculate the values here to the right and you can see the first value is x minus x bar so x minus the sample mean so that'll be equal sign and I have these color codes so you can tell this is for substance use so we'll take b2 and then we'll subtract the sample mean which is 43 I'm going to press F4 to make that an absolute reference so that when I autofill it, it'll stay locked to B18, which is the mean for substance use. So you can see for the first calculation, zero, because the score was 43 and the mean was 43. I'm to, so I'm going to autofill this down by moving to the bottom right and just dragging this all the way down. So now I have the X minus the mean values for substance use. And then all we need to do here is square the result from the F column here. So I'll start here in cell G2. And it'll be equal sign and the value from F2. And then shift 6, which is the caret symbol. And then 2. So that'll square it. And then again, I'm going to autofill then move to the next level of the independent variable and we'll use the same procedure. So in this case it'll be 35 minus the mean for depression. So it'll be C18 instead of B18. Again, I'll press F4 to lock that in place. Ought to fill that down and then square that value and then autofill that down. 
And then for trauma, of course, the same thing. Remembering to use the mean from trauma, which is 56. F4 makes that an absolute reference. Autofill that down. And then square those values. And then autofill those values down. And now we have the top part of the section complete. All these values are in place. We just need to calculate the sums uh, down here for each of the levels. So equal sign sum. Now highlight G2 through G16. And I can actually copy this, control C, and then control V, and again control V over here to speed that process up a little bit. So now we're ready to move over to the right and calculate the sum of squares within. You can see it's the one in uh, light blue here. And this is fairly straightforward. It's equal to the value in G19 plus I19 plus K19. So it's the sum of these three values here. So next we're going to calculate the sum of squares total. And to do that, I'm going to move down here a bit. And you can see I have all the same scores from up here arranged in one column, as they would be in SPSS. So first I'll calculate the mean for this column. So equal sign average, and then all these values, there's 45 records here. You can see that the mean is 49. And then moving up, I want to calculate each value minus the mean. So it'll be equal sign, and then 43 minus, I'll move down here to B69. That's 49. Again, I'm going to press F4 to make that an absolute reference, just as I did uh, in the upper section there. And then I'm going to autofill that down. And again, just like I did before up here, I'm going to square this, equal sign, the value, shift 6 caret symbol and 2 and then I'm going to uh, autofill this down and then here in this gray cell you can see I have sum over here in the darker gray in this gray cell I want the sum of all these values so I'll equal sign sum and I'll just select all the values here and press enter See, so it's 5,534. This is the sum of squares total. So all I need to do now is move up to sum of squares total, hit equal sign, and then reference that cell, which is D70. Click enter. So now I have both the sum of squares total and the sum of squares within calculated. Now, sum of squares total equals sum of squares between plus sum of squares within. So I can calculate the sum of squares between value with these two values. And of course, it'll simply be uh, equal sign sum of squares total minus sum of squares within. So the sum of squares between is 1,290. Next, we want to calculate the sum of squares between divided by the degrees of freedom. And there are two types of degrees of freedom we're working with here. The de degrees of freedom for between and the degrees of freedom for within. And they're calculated differently. So when using degrees of freedom here, it's the total number of levels of the independent variable, the total number of groups, minus 1. 
So to calculate the sum of squares between divided by degrees of freedom, it would be equal sign, and then of course sum of squares between, and then divided by 3 minus 1, which is 2. So I'll just put in 2, and the sum of squares between divided by degrees of freedom is 645. Now I'll calculate the sum of squares within divided by the degrees of freedom. So that'll be equal sign, and then sum of squares within, which is up here, divided by open parenthesis, count. And I'm going to select all the scores in the dependent variable functioning, which I have here in column B. And we know there are 45 here, but I want to show you how to construct this function. And then we'll subtract 3 from that value. So it's the total number of scores minus the total number of groups or levels of the independent variable. So the value we have here is 101.0476. And then to calculate the f value, we will take the sum of squares between and divide by the sum of squares within. And we arrive at 6.383129 as the f value. So we can calculate the F value here, but you would need a critical values table to determine whether or not you would reject the null hypothesis. And the critical values table for the F distribution will ask for numerator degrees of freedom and denominator degrees of freedom, or sometimes they'll be referred to as de degrees of freedom one and degrees of freedom two. So know that the numerator degrees of freedom refers to the value, in this case, of 2, the number of groups minus 1. And the denominator degrees of freedom refers to the number of scores minus the number of groups. So with that information, you can find the critical value for f, and then you compare that with, in this case, the 6.38 value. And if 6.38 is greater than the critical value, you reject the null hypothesis. Assuming we have an alpha of 0 0.05, in this case, we would reject the null hypothesis. This is a statistically significant finding. So I'll demonstrate that with SPSS. So moving over to SPSS, you can see I have all the scores and the three levels of the independent variable treatment uh, loaded in the format to where we can run analyses in SPSS. So it's configured differently than in Excel. I'll go to Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate. Treatment will be the fixed factor or independent variable, and then scores the dependent variable. I'll click OK. And you can see here the F value is the same, 6.383, and the, the P value significance is 0 0.004. Now I'm going to minimize the data editor here so that we can see the output values compared with what I have here in Excel. And as I mentioned, of course, the F values match. And you can see here the sum of squares between in Excel is 1,290, and you can see that's here under treatment, right? Under type 3 sum of squares column, under treatment you have the sum of squares between. Sum of squares within, 4,244, and you can see in SPSS that's under error, 4244, and then the total is 5,534, and that's here under corrected total in SPSS. And you can also see here under degrees of freedom that with uh, aligned with treatment, degrees of freedom is 2. That matches the numerator degrees of freedom that we used over here in the sum of squares between divided by degrees of freedom calculation. 
and under degrees of freedom and error we have the value of 42 which we used here in these sum of squares within divided by degrees of freedom calculation. So the treatment degrees of freedom, that's our numerator degrees of freedom, and then the error 42, that's the denominator degrees of freedom. I hope you found this video on calculating an ANOVA step-by-step -step in Excel to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.